Should we start? Sure, so we can start. We can start, then others will be joining as we go. So. Okay, uh, allow me to share my screen. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, very well, we do. Okay, okay, sure. Uh, okay, so today uh, me and Betty will be presenting to you about uh, Snowflake and for, uh, five strand. Uh, so I have uh, made uh, an introduction about myself on the, the on the on the previous <clears throat> the previous courses. So maybe BT can introduce herself. Okay, hi everyone. So my name is Beta Lim Sisa and I'm a bot for trainee and currently I'm working as a data engineer at Adulidio. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'll be uh, starting the like the high level introduction about uh, snowflake in different data architectures and why we need them and uh, bt will uh, continue from the five trend part and she will basically show you some demonstrations uh, so while working as a data engineer uh, most companies fail to have a, a, a pipeline or a system that is resilient or able to call, uh, to manage uh, different changes that can be uh, that can arrive and uh, most companies also fail to have uh, a simple system or a simple pipeline which is built to just provide the data uh, and of course stability is another issue uh, mostly data evolve when schemas change uh, you will have the entire uh, data shifted to uh, shifted by one column and you will get the entire data uh, differently uh, and <clears throat> also different companies also uh, don't have uh, this uh, this quality of data engineer where uh, it's adequate to handle the business domain and mostly the system or like the pipelines they build uh, are normally they are uh, incapable of handling big data. So uh, that's why we design or people's design architectures or data architectures. Uh, usually uh, designing a database in a single data, uh, data in a single database and calling it is good, uh, is good, is not optimum. And this is because like normalizing of course will uh, put the data in a good form but uh, while you're querying data different joins big joins will be arriving and that will be uh, very difficult when we start talking about billions and millions and billions of rows uh, so like after this we can say that every warehouse architecture uh, will be different so for company A, we will have a good uh, type of warehouse architecture, and for company B, we will have another type of architecture which is fit, which is good enough for that company specific. <clears throat> but the most common and the starting point of uh, data, uh, data warehouse architectures, building data warehouse architectures include uh, Z3, the Kimball, the Inmon, and the data vault architectures. So I'll give you a basic highlight, a highlight level, about the Kimball and Inmon, you can go and research about the data vault. So for the Inmon architecture, usually it's it's called, or let me start from the Kimball. Uh, so for the Kimball architecture, uh, you usually start from the business need of the company. So if you have, a, let's say, if you have a business, uh, a data need from uh, one modeling, one machine learning modeling, 
and if you if you have a request from uh, analytics and if you have a request from another maybe reporting uh, you'll be starting from those points and if you get your data requirements you go back to your uh, dimensional so-called the dim dimensional data warehousing which is a denormalized form of uh, a raw data or data that you have uh, compiled from different sources. It may be from uh, uh, maybe some kind of a three bucket or from it may be from API uh, requests or from direct CSVs or videos and uh, uh, and things. So the second one is the in-one architecture. And in the in-one architecture, uh, you usually start from the data. This is called uh, top-down. So it might be easy to understand. So you will uh, start from whatever data you have, and you will basically convert it into this, um, the so-called uh, data warehouse where you'll be normalizing the entire data. And then you will start you will start to have a, a different data marts which are going to be provided for uh, the company, for the company, different company requirements. So while starting from there, you can build your different data warehouse architectures. So this is about the data architectures. Uh, the next one is uh, maybe a bit introduction about Snowflake. Uh, so Snowflake was uh, developed on 2012. Uh, it's fully merged, uh, fully managed software as service product. Uh, they are just a company. They will provide you a data warehouse, a data lake. Uh, it's just a single platform to provide you with a single uh, or a simple uh, data warehouse can build your data lakes there and it's simpler for data engineers and data science to kind of play around with the data uh, yes so they usually store it they have their own of course different uh, different science that are applied internally like storing it in a columnar way meaning a, a columnar way yeah, and compressing the data and managing the data will going to be up to them you'll just provide them the data and whenever you want to query the data, you'll just uh, call it via maybe the worksheet that they provide you or via Python connector or by anything. So there are different uh, advantages of Snowflake. Uh, maybe I'll share you this. You can search it. But let me give you just a little bit of maybe three or four of them. Uh, so the main thing that uh, Snowflake provides, OK, question. What's the difference between data warehouse and data lake? Okay, so uh, data warehouse is usually uh, good for being queried, and in data lake, assume like after a data lake, you'll be building a data warehouse. So in that data warehouse, you will have uh, maybe. So in the data lake, you might have the same structured data. A structured data or even non-structured data like videos uh, and other things are included but in the data warehouse you should be having uh, structured data and same structured data maybe in some in some cases but you can't have non-structured data and of course you can uh, directly query from data warehouses but it's 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 uh, it's hard to query from data leaks. This is as far as my understanding goes. If uh, BTS, okay, she I confirmed that this is. Okay, so uh, let's continue here. So advantage of Snowflake, uh, you can have uh, an API access for both uh, raw data and processed data. Uh, so you, we have two things in Snowflake, the staged area and the tables. Uh, so the staged area means like, assume it as a data leak or not a data leak or maybe uh, non-normalized or it's not one table, it's just an aggregate of something. And the table is actually a database table, an actual database table that you, that you think. So you can query data exactly from the staged area and directly from the tables. Uh, and the biggest uh, advantage of uh, Snowflake is its ability to support same structured data formats like parquets, XMLs, and JSONs are supported. You can 
put them in stage data and directly query it will uh, detect it as a table and you can directly query it from the stage data yeah so there are some limitations of course about snowflake it's limited uh, number of rows uh, limited number of rows to kind of present you or to show you some statistics uh, and there are uh, limited number of plots this is of course what we expect so these are what uh, limitations that we have seen if you have you can maybe research more so let me take you with this use case that we have done of snowflake so the company had uh, its own data like a data lake and we used uh, usually athena and glue these are aws services to kind of query data to structure data and things so we wanted to migrate to snowflake uh, so as you can see in the first in the right uh, core in the left right corner in the left top corner sorry uh, you will have the current data so the current data we injected it into or we migrated it into snowflake via python via python connector uh, to a staged area and and then via like python or you can do a worksheet uh, you can process or transform that uh, data in the staged area into a tables so the advantage of uh, having the python connector is you can schedule it and you can query the transformation uh, you can do the transformation the cleaning the sanity checks whenever uh, you want for the worksheet you have to be available and actually uh, run that query and then we kind of try to query data from both the staged area and from the cleaned one from the tables and we tried to learn the time and the credit complexity of uh, of how how much this snowflake will perform so this is assuming the entire the entire our entire system giving it to snowflake and we just wanted to estimate the time complexities or how fast it's going to be and the credit complexities uh, so we queried it directly to a jupyter notebook that is uh, uh, it provides you a snowflake object and it's possible to get it as a pandas data frame and a spark data frame to be used for modeling or for any other purposes and we also queried it for uh, via like the snowflake worksheet which is you go to the Snowflake's website and you do some queries and it will provide you a data as you can see it like this. And the advantage of uh, having this is you can download the CSV and give it to someone that that, that wants the data. So uh, we found out uh, this, uh, these complexities like the time complexity for the worksheet or it was around 8.4 second. Uh, and it took our, our greater than two minutes of course but it was about it's because our it was because our queries so via this we estimated the credit complexities it took uh, it took around 1.02 uh, credits uh, so credit is something that that's going to be uh, your bill for using the software the the the, the snowflake service so uh, we injected small uh, like part of our data into Snowflake and we get this much credit. So we estimated the entire or the, if had we given it the entire data, what would be the credit or the credit complexity would be. So we estimated that and provided for the company. So you can do uh, such things. Yeah, so this is my part. If you have any, I, I know this is going, this is a little bit uh, theoretical. BT will provide us with, uh, with the remaining. Thanks. If you have any questions. Okay, uh, Binia. Hello. Can you hear me? Me. Hello, can you hear? Yeah. 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 Am I audible? Yeah. Okay, so my question is, uh, uh, 
I was just saying thank you, thanks for the presentation. And my question is uh, uh, about warehouse. Uh, how exactly is it different from uh, like a normal database? It's my understanding is that uh, behind the scene, maybe the storage uh, uh, structure is more of co columnar uh, instead of row wise, uh, and, and uh, there might be other efficiency based maybe. Uh, Warehouse are designed for uh, for analytics and database are more of for transaction. Is this a difference uh, apart from that? Are they similar? Yeah, mostly you're right. And uh, normally, so one thing just to, to add for uh, in that point, like the you assume you, some database and the actual the logical database and the actual the physical position uh in some cases in some scenarios like for in aws athena uh, they are different so what it assumes as a schema or something is not actually in the table or it's not directly uh, as you think as as you think it in a table of a database so in, in these cases, database in data warehouse will have a, di a completely different uh, different views as far as my understanding goes. Uh, Betty? Yeah, and to add some things here, so basically you can add uh, several databases to um, your Snowflake account and then you can store your data there. So the difference mainly is that how it's going to store the data because here it's going to use a columnar format plus it's going to partition your data. So whenever you are running a certain query, instead of scanning the entire data, uh, since it's it has several partitions and it's going to just load that particular data and how it is stored and the architecture of how Snowflake is created is uh, somehow what makes it um, that query is more faster than normal ones, but basically you can create different databases inside your Snowflake account. So Bini, can you continue on sharing and go to the next slide, please? Okay, and next slide. Okay, and next we will take a look at a tool called Fivetran. So if you are not familiar with Fivetran, okay. If you are not familiar with Fivetran, what it essentially does is it automates data from your sources to your destination. So um, data basically needs to be uh, extracted from your sources and then converted into a more useful data set for analysis. So you basically don't want to write the whole pipeline from scratch in order to read your data, get the data, uh, create a connection and then write it to the destination and also we need to monitor. Uh, of course you can do that by writing a code and then querying it and refactoring your data for analysis but there are some really available tools on the internet on the market that makes your life way easier in order to simply connect and move your data from the source to the destination. So one of those tools is Fivetran. So Fivetran is basically a popular ALT tool which offers um, an automated data integration from the source to the destination and uh, delivers some ready to use connectors that automatically can adapt whenever your schemas or whenever your APIs are changing. And it ensures us to have um, a consistent and reliable access to the data. So uh, what Fivetran does is it offers us with a multiple uh, pre-built connectors that can be used to connect to the source data. So these connectors are defined or they are predefined by Factran. So there is no manual coding involved in it. You can simply add the connector to the pipeline and configure it with the data source. And once connected to the source system, what Factran does is that it's going to extract the information and uh, load it to the target data source that you have chosen. And the sources that it can retrieve data from are numerous, including Amazon S3, Google Drive, Azure SQL database, and also 
we can select different destinations like post vertical redshift or snowflake next slide please yeah next let's take a look at how five plan works so i think this will give you a nice visual here so you can connect to a bunch of different sources and have five plan extract and load as into your data warehouse uh, basically, this is going to be done on an automated schedule. So a five trunk connector will reach out to your source and it will receive that data from it and then it will write it to your destination. So once the connector process ingests the data query result, the next step will be uh, five trunk will normalize and deduplicate that data. So there are a few types of transformations that five trunk performs uh, automatically, one of them being normalization. So normalization will eliminate the duplicate and redundant data values from our data. And uh, next slide, please. Next, let's take a look at the high level features of Python. So as what I was saying earlier, you can basically adjust the sync frequency, which means how often Python attempts to um, replicate your data from the search to the destination. So by default, the, the sync frequency is set to six hours. But if you want Fractan to sync your data more often or less often, you can go ahead and change the sync frequency. And the next one will be, it is basically fully managed and takes care of all the engineering work for us. So there will be a minimum amount of task that's required from us. And it has uh, more than 150 connectors, which are going to help us in order to read our data and synchronize them. And it's all UI. So with just a click of button, you can uh, extract your data and load it to um, the destination. So there is no need for uh, manually writing the code. And one important uh, feature of Python is it takes care of the source schema changes. So whenever there is a change in the source schema, uh, it's going to um, automatically update and reformat the tables in your warehouse, which will save you time, resource, and money. So basically, whenever there is a change in the source schema, our pipeline is going to be uh, to face a problem. So with the uh, automatic schema migration provided by Python, you won't have to deal with this issue. And the other one is uh, data blocking. So it basically allows us to selectively replicate our data. So you can omit certain tables or certain columns from replicating into your destination. So it's only available for some of the connectors. So you need to check that, but uh, if it is available, uh, it has several um, advantages. One of it being, avoiding uh, the exposing of sensitive information like PII or uh, personal identifiable, identifiable information in your destination. So it saves us also storage space because only the relevant data is being uh, seen to your destination. And when it comes to the pricing, it has a consumption-based pricing. So you are going to be charged based on your monthly active work. So What's meant by monthly active rows is that it's it only counts the rows that have been updated or that have been newly added um, inside the, in, on that particular month, and it's going to charge you based on the number of rows or the number of active rows. Mm -hmm. So as your monthly consumption increases, so the cost per row declines automatically. So next, let's take a look at a demo. Um, I think you can't see my screen. So um, for this demo, I'm just uh, we are just going to and if you don't have uh, a five trunk or a snowflake account, I have a 40 day free trial account so you can sign up and start exploring. So for this demo, I'm going to show you how we can uh, use Python in order to move a data from a simple Google sheet to a Snowflake database. So 
whenever there is a change in the data found in the Google Sheet, it's going to automatically go and update the values in the Snowflake database. So to start with, we will start, this is uh, what the Python dashboard looks like. So we can add a connector here. And for this, uh, as what I was saying, there are a lot of uh, connectors that you can choose. And for this one, I'm going to uh, delete Google Sheets, and then click on Continue Save Up. And after this, we will uh, give the name for the destination table. For this one, I'm going to say sample data. And you need to grant access. So I'm going to authorize it. And allow it to access my account. So that notification has succeeded. So next we will need to share the URL. So I'm going to copy this and paste the URL here. Next we will uh, select a name range. So uh, inside this Google Sheet, I have already created a name range. So I'm gonna select that, this one, and then save and test it. It's going to take a few minutes, so let's wait for it and we will see how it goes. And uh, until that, what I'm going to do is we will need to also set up our destination. So this is uh, the Snowflake uh, Classic Console. So um, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user, a password, and uh, give a role to 5chan, and then and uh, okay, so uh, warehouse when it comes to okay, do I have a question? Okay, am I? I think he has left. Okay, so uh, so uh, the term warehouse means the computer resource when it comes to Snowflake. So creating a warehouse means creating a computer resource. So I have also created a warehouse so that, that the queries will be one. So from here, if you can see it, uh, when I created the warehouse, you can see it, uh, the size of the warehouse as x small and uh, x small is basically the smallest one. So you can, uh, always select another type of warehouse size. And also uh, these two are very important if you want to uh, manage the costs because whenever the compute resource is not running, you need to set the auto um, suspend and also resume whenever there is a query running and initially it's uh, suspended as you can see here. So uh, since it's going to take some time, I have run this code and created a database called my database. So as you can see, it, it's empty now. So we will uh, populate the data to here. Yes, so all connection dates have passed. So I'm going to head and continue. So as what I was saying earlier, you can choose to say to sync all of your data or you can choose columns to block or not so you can click on this one and then select some columns from or avoid some columns from being um, replicated in your destination system but for now i'm going to sync all of our data so i'm going to click that and yeah so uh let me show you the destination so i have set up the destination to a snowflake warehouse so let me show you this. Yeah, so you will give it the host name and then the user, the database and the password that you have created and then you will save and test it. So I have already done that. I don't need to go back. Um, Yeah, so um, initially it's going to sync all of the historical data to the database. So I will go ahead and start the initial sync. And as you can see it here, it's syncing. So uh, earlier I was talking about the sync frequency. So if you come up to the setup tab, 
the set up frequency as you can see it here is set to six hours by default so you can move it to five minutes 15 minutes or even 24 hours based on your choice so i'm gonna leave it to six hours and also you can send a notification if some of uh, the sync is talking, taking uh, long hours and also you can delete the connection if you are no longer needing it um, and once uh, the sync is complete there will be additional table inside your snowflake i will show you later on and it's going to be the only one so it's going to try all of the values where the sync has started where it has ended whether it has succeeded or it has failed and all of those informations are saved and stored inside uh, another table inside our details so let's give it a few minutes like a minute or two so until that if anyone has a question you can ask it can be uh, the question can be on snowflake or it can be on factor so whatever is there a way to practice using them without being charged but there are which are good for you yes so this one the one that i'm showing you is a free trial so you can try everything using the free trial account for both Fivetran and uh snowflake so the only limitation is it has um 400 uh credits limit i guess so that's only uh limit but you can try every feature using the free trial account okay Binam, go ahead okay uh thank you better uh, my question is uh, if we are going to practice or learn using these tools uh, is there a way we can do it without being charged uh, or uh, uh, for example is that free trial enough to develop our skills on this yes. yeah exactly so you can try every feature using the free account so you can practice using it using it yeah okay, thanks okay anyone else Yes, so as you can see it here, it has already um, synced all the data. So if I go here and run it, yeah, so we now have uh, our table, which is the sample data here. So if I click on that, so this is the database inside Snowflake which we were talking earlier. So if I preview that data, it's gonna give me all um, the rows that are inside the Google Sheet. So it has successfully uh, loaded the data here. So I was also talking about the five tran audit uh, file. So what it has a table, what it has is, it's going to store everything that about the sync. So it will have the ID, when the update has started and also the schema the table and also if the status the status was okay or if if it has failed so we now have the data so if i go ahead and change some of the values here for example let me change this one to 30 and this one to 25 or something so if i go ahead and do that I will have, and if I want this to be, so there are two options in Python. The first one is you can have a scheduled sync and which if you set it to five minutes, every five minutes it's going to uh, connect to your source, check if there are any new data and then only uh, write the new, the new data or the data. And what you can do is if you want the sync to be uh, held uh, now, you can just uh, click on this button and Sync will start automatically. So I have already changed the Google uh, a little bit. So if I start the sync now, it's going to change uh, the data value inside this table, and also a new row. I will expect a new row here about um, the sync that I'm doing currently. So yeah, has it finished? Um, If I 
I didn't think uh, it, I guess. So, yeah, it has started sending the data. So, once it is done, it's going to update those values and also add the history about the seed. Yeah, this is basically it. So, if you want to read more about it, you can see that documentation. And if you have some questions, you can also raise it here. And yeah, that's basically it. Anybody with a question? OK, Mero. Okay, hello. Uh, are you, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm asking this right, but Snowflake is like the warehouse, the database, and the, uh, the five trend is the connector. Is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah. I just want to clarify that. Thank you. Yeah, and also apart from this, one of the connectors is five trend, and apart from this, there is a what you call snow pipe that you can use on snowflake in order to yeah let me show you this and how it works so it has already finished so if i go ahead and refresh this and oh preview data yeah, so as you can see here, I have another row about uh, the sink. It tells me the details about the sink. And if I go ahead and see the sample data, now I'm expecting the last row to be um, modified. So it has now been modified with a new value. So this is how it works. And I was telling you about, okay, Martin, I'll come back to you. And I was telling you about so you can either use five tran and also if you want to uh, automatically load your data from let's say an s3 bucket to a snowflake account a snowflake also provides what's called snow pipe which is going to um, automatically detect whenever there are new files inside your s3 bucket and uh queue those files and load it to your uh snowflake database so that's also another alternative it's better if you also experiment more on that yeah martin go ahead okay thank you i, I had three questions mm -hmm. yeah the first one is um i don't know but my when i open my the snowflake that i was using it doesn't mm -hmm. look like us there is no those buttons over there on top Okay, so um, it was so, okay. Yeah, okay, it's okay. okay. So I, I, I think maybe uh, we are using two different types. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not two different types. So if you can see it here, you can use uh, there are two. Right. There is a snow site, and also there is a classic console. There are two um, ways you can use it. So if I click on snow site, it's going to be a bit different. So is it the one that you are seeing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you can use either of them. So the newer, the newer one is the snow site, and the classic console is the earlier one. So you can switch between the two. So if I want to go back to the classic console, I can always go ahead and click this, and you should be seeing the same screen like me. Yeah. Okay. Now over there. Um. Okay. Now, like for example, just go to the snowflake. Okay. Mm, this if one? you go to databases, databases. Okay. Uh, no, okay, the this one? okay. Uh, then pick like one table. Uh, there was that optional thing where they were saying you can load table. That, that one over there, up load table. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so yeah that is i think i didn't know that then number two okay 
is it is it free is snowflake free because i think it's uh, it was it was saying that at some point it will reach and it will uh cut off it is not free yeah so both tools are paid once so you need to pay uh, i was telling you about the payment when it comes to five times so for, for five times uh, you are going to be charged based on the monthly active rows that means the rows that are updated or the rows that have been newly added in the particular month. So that's how they are going to calculate the cost. And when it comes to Snowflake, you are going to be charged based on your credits. So uh, credits, for example, one excess credit is around $4, if I'm not mistaken, Bini. So uh, every query that you run will calculate the total number of credits. and those credits will have a certain amount of money and then will be charged based on that. Yeah. It's not free. Uh, what I was saying was you can use a free trial for 14 days and experiment. Okay, uh, so um, if I get things right, uh, I have to, there's, there's, there's no alternative to Snowflake that I can use which is free, uh, which is free. Um, there are, you can use also, you can build your own warehouse on Amazon S3 using different tools like Athena and Glue, but then again, Athena and Glue are also going to cost you some money. So, yeah. And, okay, okay, that's, that's uh, interesting. And also, yeah, and also when it comes to Athena and Glue, you are the one that's uh, responsible for partitioning your data and so on, but the Snowflake will automatically store your data as micro partitions and yeah, that's it. Okay, and uh, now the other question I had was, I want to know uh, how do I connect uh, GCP? I created a GCP bucket mm -hmm. and I wanted to connect the GCP bucket to the Snowflake, but it was mm -hmm. not uh getting to it wasn't actually accessing the data it keeps on like it gives different types of errors uh with different types of techniques i was trying to use different types of techniques to solve uh to go around it so uh there's this thing i've seen five turn uh sorry for entering the meeting late i've just seen that uh there's five turn Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to know like whether this how this five turn can solve that particular problem okay so can you tell me what you have tried how did you try to connect uh it to snowflake uh, unless i share my screen okay so basically five turn has various connectors so you can use any of that and connect your data warehouses yeah data sources to its destination so you can basically use five turn i don't know how you have tried it but um there's definitely a way of inside tunnel which you can connect and uh, move your data from the buckets to a snowflake environment. Mm. Okay, and quick, uh, quick question, uh, Martin. Uh, yeah. Where is uh, data? Yeah, my, my data is from the GCP bucket and I want to connect it to the Snowflake, uh, whatever. So I, every time I was trying to do the connection, it keeps on breaking, or it keeps on uh, giving those issues of uh, either it's permissions, if it's not permissions, it will just uh, give me different types of errors. So uh, it was that back and forth. So I was looking for other ways to connect because it was just a simple CSV. I wanted to upload it to Snowflake but you can't upload to Snowflake without uh, giving it an allowed prefix, if if that is uh, getting different data from online, that is. Okay, so try five tran since it has many connectors. And if it's still not working for you, you can reach out to us and we can take a look at it together. Okay. Um, it might be a schema mismatch, or we need to actually see what the problem is in order to know why it's not working. So yeah, but okay. I, I will assume that five tran will work for you. Okay, I'll try out five tran. Uh, then another question is: uh, I see people normally uh, when they're looking for those jobs, they'll say like, uh, "Are you experienced in Snowflake? Are you experienced in uh, uh, this this uh, particular tools like we're using right now?" But I'm wondering, Snowflake is is not free. So uh, I think the people who use it are companies. Then how 
they what what happens why is it that they're asking you like whether you're experienced in a uh, snowflake okay so to answer this so like what you have said snowflake and five tran are a bit expensive tools so um, most companies may not be using them but uh, knowing how snowflake works how it partitions your data how it stores it, and things like that will also help you in order to uh, design your own data warehouses using different tools which are less expensive than that so knowing those concepts and how it actually works is something that's going to help you so you can take that as that and if there is also a company which can afford paying for those tools that's also a plus but knowing how it works and how it's going to give you a fast response is something that you should be able to know yeah Okay, uh, I think that's all. Uh, thank you. Okay, anyone else with a question? Okay, I think that's all. Thank you, guys. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, Binyam and Betty. Um, thanks also to Ms. Hill for able to attend this tutorial. So, thanks very much. I'm going to stop the recording. So, okay, bye.